Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. Press Row returns from our holiday hiatus. Hope you guys had a nice Thanksgiving. Excited to be back talking high school sports along with the usual cast of characters, Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. Let's jump right in. State championship weekend for the high school football season and three MAC teams trying to win state titles in divisions five, six, and seven, just like last year. Will 2015 have the same outcome as 2014 for the MAC? Man, who could have predicted this? <laughs> oh, wait. I think we did. We all did. Yeah. Coldwater, Marion Local, and uh, Fort Recovery or Minster, I think we said it would be, yep. and uh, we got that exactly right. Uh, you know, who would bet against a repeat three-peat? I, I don't think there's any doubt that it's highly likely, and it'll really be neat for Fort Recovery. Uh, obviously, they don't have the pedigree that Coldwater and Marion Local do, and uh, I'm, I'm a big proponent of dynasties. I think they're great, and I salute Mary Local and Coldwater if they continue theirs, but there's always something special when a team wins that first title, and uh, I'm sure hoping Fort Recovery gets it done for that reason alone. It'll be something special. When I, I had the opportunity to do the Fort Recovery Minster game here for WOSN a couple of weeks ago, and I was a fan of what Fort Recovery did um, already just because to see this program go from a bottom feeder in the MAC to being a team that you know played well last year, made the playoffs, back in the playoffs, making a deep run this year. You know I'm rooting for them like heck. That's the team I want to see win more than any of the other three of the three that are down there from our area. No disrespect to Marin Local and Coldwater, I think that they could definitely do the job. I really want to see Fort Recovery bring that title home. Um, and then you look at the other superlative with the three schools, the Holman family with uh, all their grandkids that are yeah. on the three teams that are playing as well. Really cool. And talk about a heck of a Christmas party that will be if all three come home with state titles and they'll get to compare rings and all that good stuff too. Fort Recovery is the seventh MAC team to make the state football championship game. If they can win on a Friday, they'll be the seventh MAC team to win a state football title. As uh, you have to start to wonder what's, what's up with Anna New Bremen Park where they haven't done it yet. Those are the only three <laughs> MAC football schools not to reach the state championship game. I think it's going to be an interesting contest particularly in Division 6 between Marion Local and Curley. You know, the yep. Flyers moving up to D6 this year after being in D7 in the last couple. Uh, this is a Marion Local team that perhaps maybe isn't quite as dominant as we've seen the Flyers be, perhaps because of moving up to Division 6, but they're still extremely efficient, and they're playing a Kirtland team who, if it wasn't for the MAC, Kirtland would have had a couple state titles already by now. I love the uh, result that Marion Local had a couple weeks ago, that 9-6 slobber knocker against Mechanicsburg. That was some old-style football in the bad weather. And, and I think this, this Marion Local team is the one that just figures out how to win, knows how to win. It's one of those teams. You're right, it's not as dominant as some of their other teams, but ultimately one more, one more win and it won't matter. They don't ask how much, they ask how many. It must be that Mustang blood. <laughs> it must be. <laughs> I brought it up to uh, Tim Goodwin yesterday at practice. Uh, you know, if they win their fifth in a row, it ties them for most all time, most consecutive state titles with St. Ignatius. And he didn't care. And he, of course he wouldn't. And I knew the answer already. But it's just interesting to see how the focus they are on year to year. And it's a different group of kids every year and how special that is. And on the flip side of that, Fort Recovery, as you guys said, their practice, you know, they were calm and, and focused and doing their thing. But you know, December 1st, they're still practicing and they can't wait to take the field at the Horseshoe. That's a whole another animal that I'm sure everybody in that community is excited for. So lots to look forward to this weekend. We'll have highlights of all three games on the Sports Report. All right, let's go to high school hoops now with the Elida tip-off previous weekend. Who impressed you most there? It has to be LCC did they? because they went 2-0 or did somebody else stand out? Uh, you know, LCC didn't impress me at all because they did exactly what I figured they were going to do. So the bar to impress me was much higher for them. Uh, I, you know, I think the other three teams all had something good come out of it. You know, Bath had that absolute dumpster fire on Friday. Uh, you just felt bad for them. It kept stretching on the 0 for 22 to start the game. And they come back Saturday and play really well and beat Elida. On the flip side of that, Elida the first night plays LCC, really slugged it out with them for most of the game. Now, they dropped the ball on Saturday, but you got to be encouraged with the way they were able to compete with Lima Central Catholic. And for Shawnee, you got to feel good for them because they had focused on last year. A big problem for them was falling behind in games and having to fight their way back. And they vowed that wasn't going to be they were going to operate this year. And they come out and jump on Bath quickly on Friday night and blow them out subsequently lose to the T-Birds. But uh, oh, I think uh, the other three all had some positives. 
Well, I'm a Central Catholic, you know, being facetious, obviously impressive. And, it, uh, you know, Dantes Walton is even another notch better than he was last year. Trey Cobbs, uh, that ultimate quickness they have. And the, the T-Birds were clearly the dominant team. Well, I was more impressed with what LCC did on Tuesday, picking up the win sure. over Toledo St. John's. But I, I follow you, Todd, that we, we expected LCC to win that tournament. And so the fact that they did wasn't that impressive. What Bath did impressed me, the way they were able to bounce back from really just an awful performance on Friday and come back and not only play well on Saturday, but get the victory on Saturday. I think that bodes well for the Wildcats moving forward, that they can put a game like that behind them and pick up a victory over Elida, a team they're going to see again at least one more time in the regular season. You know, I, I, I follow where you guys are going, and obviously, you know, as the voice of the birds, it was an easy... Minister you know, of propaganda. Minister of propaganda that works as well. <laughs> um, you know, to me, from their perspective, I, you know, was they had four of their five starters play exceptionally good basketball. Nick Tafflinger on the defensive end was the biggest surprise to me, and that has carried over, uh, carried over on Tuesday night as well. He had a couple of key steals in the fourth quarter that helped propel the T-Birds to as big of a lead as much as 10 points in the game with Toledo St. John's. Seeing him on the defensive end, seeing his effort defensively, I think was a plus and something that if they can build on that, that will help Frank Hill's team down the road. Bath was a huge you know, improvement from Friday to Saturday. Todd, you were doing the game. You know, you did both their games on Friday and Saturday. No, absolutely zero life on their bench, in the crowd, anything, game one. I saw more energy and more life in the first three minutes of game two than I did the entire Friday night out of them. And Elida, I think Elida can take a lot from this as well, especially when you've got a new point card like they do with Drew Sarno. Sarno sh shot five of seven from three Friday night. He handled the ball well, distributed the offense, I thought, pretty well for Denny Thompson and company too. But they've got to make sure that they've got another kid who can score when Josh Press has a bad scoring night like he did in game two. Subsequently, Shawnee's got to do the same thing too because as we saw Saturday in the championship, Jaden O'Neill got absolutely erased by Lima Central Catholic. He was held to three points after 28 the night before. And who's going to step up and be that right. number two guy? I don't know who it is. I couldn't see anybody on Saturday at least. They well, were. LCC proved that point. Right. I mean, they obviously focused on O'Neill and they have the tools and the wherewithal and the coaching and the defensive intensity to take somebody away. They did that. Shawnee had no answer. Uh, as far as Lima Central Catholic goes, uh, they're very impressive. But, you know, it looks to me, though, that uh, if they could ill afford to have Trey Cobbs out for very long, Correct. whether it's for foul trouble or some kind of nagging injury or, God forbid, worse. Uh, not that you can replace Diantes Walton either, but Cobbs is truly unique in what they have right now. And if he misses any time, that, that could hurt them. because, And I'm talking about the ultimate goal right. here, yeah. state well, championship. Correct. Well, that's the only thing LCC yeah, has to play for. That's all they're going yeah, that, That's all they're going they, they will be very upfront about mm -hmm. it. Everything is destination Columbus for them. And last night, what I thought, and Mark, you said you listened to the game, the last two minutes, they played without Walton, who fouled out. And, you know, they had, you know, Cobbs was 8 of 8 from the line in the fourth quarter, had 13 of his 24 points come in that fourth quarter. You know, so obviously you have that guy that's capable of stepping up, but it was really, really weird at crunch time, late in those last minute and a half or so, not Seton Walton on the floor because he was on the bench disqualified because of fouls. Well, I think that you guys were talking about finding that second score. LCC has that. That's what separates them from the other teams. But there was a lot of big individual performances at the tip-off in general between Andrew Renner yep. and Jaden O'Neill and then all the LCC guys. So that was encouraging to see for the Lima area. Oh, absolutely. Now for Elida, it doesn't get any easier this week. They're 0-2, and now they have to play Spencerville. Is that one of the games you're looking forward to in this weekend's slate? Without yeah, a doubt. No doubt. I, you know, I had, we had gotten word that Spencerville was a little banged up, so they weren't quite sure you know, what kind of level they could play at the opening Friday night. Well, they took care of St. Henry with relative ease. Mm -hmm. I think this, this is a year Spencerville's been pointing toward from the time some of these kids were in middle school, that this could be the year that it could all come together with the right mix of veterans and younger guys and talent, that they could really have a special season. So I th definitely looking forward to their game with Elida. And from the Elida perspective, you know, I think they've seen when they play the way they need to, that they can win some games this year. Uh, they've got to get back on track and play like they did Friday night last week against Bath. Certainly won't be easy against a very balanced and talented Spencerville team. I agree with you, Todd, wholeheartedly. 
game I'm looking forward to is actually Saturday as Perry travels to Delphus Jefferson. I think Perry is a team that uh, you're hearing could make a, a deep run come postseason, a great backcourt for the Commodores going up against Trey Smith, who has got his eyes set on perhaps scoring 2,000 points in his high school career. He's already Jefferson's all-time leading scorer, is signed up play at Air Force. I think Jefferson is a team that can score a lot of points and Perry so far is off to a pretty good start. I think that's going to be an entertaining game come Saturday night. Keep your eye on Perry the middle half of the year when they get uh, Kobe Glover available yep. and get him into right. the lineup. A young man that's got good size, about 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 mm -hmm. He's got a good solid build to him. He transferred from Lima Senior, comes to Perry. He's got to sit 11 games. But a young man that they think could help them, especially inside because they have no size. I got to watch some scrimmage uh, against the Lima Central Catholic in the middle of November. Very quick team, a very, a very good team that I think could very easily win the Northwest Central Conference with the right pieces in place. And they've got all that makings, but adding Glover to the mix the second half of the season, I think could make this team just that much better. Well, unfortunately, the game we're not looking forward to is one involving Lima Senior. Nope. Right. They don't get a game until next Tuesday. Well, they just got to be antsy as can be. Yeah. Well, they've, they've, they've managed to play a couple multi-team well, scrimmages, yeah. exhibition games down in Dayton and up in Detroit and have held their own in those. Sure, but still. But to it, get to 22 games, it's going to be a grind. Yep. You got to figure Wait. somewhere yeah. in there they're going to play four games in six days or four games in a week, and it, it hopefully it doesn't want, wear them down at the end of the year. They did a four and five last, last year. year. Yeah, I remember they did, they did a yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, and then we're did. back on a Monday. So well, they've we've, done it. Yeah, we've got a bunch of games coming up for you this weekend, seven on the rebroadcast schedule. Check out the website, WOSN TV, to see who's playing when. All right, college football playoff. We had the final rankings, the penultimate rankings, I should say, before we know who's playing in the final four come out earlier this week. What, how's it going to finish, and where will Ohio State end up in the final rankings? Well, I, first part of that question, I'm not sure. I have a feeling something weird's going to happen. I got a feeling uh, Clemson could lose, Bama could lose. Something we don't think is going to happen is going to happen. I just have a weird feeling. But as far as Ohio State, I just they're going to be on the outside looking in is all I can figure. I, I don't think that there are going to be enough things happen for them to get in. But as far as the final four, I'm still a little suspect that everybody can hold serve here, and we could have some genuine chaos, and wouldn't that be fun? It would be a lot of fun. Well, I, I don't think we're going to have that chaos. I think Clemson's going to beat North Carolina. I think Bam's going to go over Florida. Oklahoma's already in, more or less. I think Michigan State's not going to have too much trouble with Iowa. So, to me, I think the question is, how are they going to, where are they going to put Michigan State after beating Iowa? Are they going to move up to the second spot? Or are they just going to move up one spot? Is it going to be Clemson and Michigan State? Is it going to be Alabama, Oklahoma? I think those are going to be the four question is just going to be where they're going to end up being. I think Ohio State's going to end up at Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, that seems to be the logical conclusion. And, you know, I if, I just have a, this stupid feeling about Clemson. I, I don't think there's any way Bama's well, going to lose to Florida. Uh, I, if Clemson loses, I could see Clemson remaining in the Still top being four. In yes. there. And yeah. I, I think there's a very distinct possibility that even if all these chaos things happen, Stanford at 11-2 and two as the Pac-12 champion could leapfrog Ohio State in the top four. Last year, conference championships meant a lot to the committee. Yeah. We're going to find out whatever, if there is this chaos, the committee is going to have to make a decision that they're going to set a precedent they probably aren't going to want to set, either taking Stanford with two losses over a bunch of one-loss teams, picking a North Carolina team that has not one but two victories over FCS teams, or taking an Ohio State team that didn't even win its division. So if there is this chaos breaking out, the committee is going to make some decisions that they probably don't want to make. Well, we just got to expand it to eight. Eight's not enough. We need to go to 32. Yeah. Why not 68? Well, because that's not an even number. This isn't basketball. <laughs> well, it's an even number, but not an even even. Let's just cut two weeks out of the season and go to the playoff like they do in Indiana. The winner of Sparty in Iowa is in. Where, where they're slotted remains to be seen. Oklahoma is in. They're in. But you mentioned, Todd, something squirrely could happen this weekend. Yeah, I, just I, think, don't. I think if Clemson loses, they go from the, from the one to probably the four. And then everything slots from there. Bama, I'd love to see him lose, but yeah, I don't probably think. not going to happen. I just want to see Feinbaum get shut up. <laughs> well, and here's an interesting thought, too. What happens if Michigan State barely beats Iowa? Will they punish Iowa, or do they put Michigan State and Iowa both in if you have some of these chaos situations play out? Uh, yeah. Well, last year it changed very much from the ranking that we're at now to the final yes. rankings, and that's because of the championship game. So we'll see. In 30 seconds or less, will the Browns, and Bengals be close this week, or will the Bengals steamroll Cleveland? It'll be close. 
Close. It'll be close and the Browns will find a new and frustrating <laughs> way to lose. Or they could just lean on the old ways and just lose like normal teams. Yeah. I, I, they they find a new way to lose every it's week. It's more entertaining when you get Because that's what Cleveland Browns football is all about. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Good job as always. And thank you for tuning in for this edition of Press Row. Enjoy your games this weekend. Hopefully we'll be back next week.